against grace and power. I told you before, when she was 15 years old, rebel forces raided her school in Uganda. She was abducted, forced to endure slavery, starvation, and given to different men. I want you to take a look at this. I first heard about my co-author before I even thought about writing a book and one day I got an email from my friend and she told about one of her students, a young woman named Grace Akalo and told her story about being kidnapped by the Lord's Resistance Army. I know it was very hard for Grace to start telling her story. October 1996, the rebels stormed into my school and abducted 139 girls, plus me. So we were deep asleep and all of a sudden we just heard this banging and shouting and they pulled us out of the dorm and tied us up and started walking with us away from the school. That was the beginning of everything, nightmare. It was a walk of four days and four nights, non-stop, without food, without water. And they started training us to be soldiers. And they gave us guns and they started sending us to, to fight. Or they sent you to look for food, which was not there at all. Kids were dying every day and Sudan was like a grave. The Ugandan government soldiers attacked the, the camp and a lot of kids died. But that day I just sat there because I was tired. And then I heard kind of a voice, a whisper telling me, get up and leave this place. And then I got up slowly and I started walking away. And the people from Southern Sudan actually found us. And so I stayed in Gulu at the barracks of the Ugandan army for two weeks before my dad and sister Akele came and took me back home. The purpose for writing the book Girl Soldier, a story of Uganda's children, was to tell people about what's been happening to the children in northern Uganda, to let people know that, uh, especially Christians, that this is something that they need to be involved in, they need to pray for these children, and also to let people know that there's hope. Would you please welcome to the help by Grace Apollo and the co-author of the book, Grace's Incredible Story, Faith McDonald. God bless you, Grace. Yes, you do. Wow. How do you tell a story like this? It's an amazing story, and it was just an act of God that he put grace and faith together to tell such a story. Hey, hey, hey. Only God could do that. Amen. <laughs> well, Grace, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have you here today. Thank you. And, and more than that, I'm thrilled to have the transparency. You know, Faith, it's one thing to go through something like this and then tie yourself up in a knot, in a shell. Then it's another thing to be able to be transparent. How do you talk about brutality? How do you talk about being enslaved? How do you talk about being passed around from one man to another as a sex object? Well, the first thing we have to know the gift of life it surpasses all the sufferings because what I went through, the death, I came out of the mouth of death, that I saw it with my eyes, that I was buried alive 
but I still walked. So that means... What do you that, mean you were buried alive? Well, after I was abducted and we were taken to Sudan, I was abducted from a school, St. Mary's College, Aboke. Right. We walked, and Sister Raquel, I don't believe that she just followed the rebels out of, um, because she was white or because she was Italian, no. I, I mean, believe that's she, a dangerous thing. It is dangerous, not even our own parents who say they love us so much, who brought us in this world, could follow the rebels. Because they, if you follow the rebels, then you really want to die. Yes. She followed them. She followed them, and I believe God gave her the strength and gave her the protection. They tried to kill her, and instead she rescued 109 girls. So through her, yeah, that's right. Amen. Through her perseverance, through her faith, they released 109 yes. of those 139. Yes. But you weren't one of them. I wasn't among the, the 100, uh, 109. It was like the end of the world has come. You've been left with these brutal people. You've been hearing what they've been doing. You, you've been hearing them cutting people's legs, lips, locking people's lips, cutting people's uh, ears, and you've left, been left with them. It's like the end of the world has come, and there's nowhere else to turn. The only thing that rang in my ears was, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. That's the only thing I remember, because there was nothing else I could do. Many people, were, many students were saying, Mommy, Daddy, but I thought, Mommy, Daddy are not going to help me here. It's only Jesus who is going to help me. Tell us a little bit about this book because we want people to go to helplinetv.com and order this book, get a copy of this book. We're, we're putting this book into our bookstore on the helplinetv.com where they can just go ahead and get the book. Grace and I wrote this book together. In the book, she tells her own story, and I tell more about the history of Uganda and God's faithfulness, the time of Idi Amin, and oh right my. up to today, what's happening today with the children, and what people can do to help as well, and what specific things that they can pray for. Tell us now, tell us about your escape. Well, after seven months of suffering um, with the rebels, walking from Uganda to Sudan, the Ugandan soldiers, the government soldiers, attacked the camp I was in. And um, I was actually tired. I couldn't, I couldn't think of escape. I can't tell mine as an escape. I tell my story as God rescuing me, mm. not as man rescuing me. because the soldiers attacked. The bullet could have killed me because there were bullets flying everywhere. People or children were dying. Mothers who had children, they're dying and the children are there crying. So many people died that day, but I survived under a tree with bullets flying everywhere. And a voice just, I heard a voice just telling me, get up and leave. And I started walking, just following that voice. Maybe somebody would think I'm stupid or I'm getting crazy. I'm getting crazy. Yeah. But I followed it, and I had um, time out, uh, cooking pans on my back and another baggage on my, back, on my head that I was given to curry. And as I was walking, a bullet just passed behind me and removed the, the saucepans, the cooking pans, but it never touched me. Mm -hmm. and, um, So, this wonderful story of grace, we want to thank you for being here and being so transparent and sharing it. But you know, it tells us that as an example, no matter what our circumstances are, and no matter what we go through, God is always there. And let's put our hands together Let's tell Grace how much we love her.
We appreciate her being on the helpline, and let's tell Faith that we love her as well and thank her for teaming up together and writing this wonderful book, Girl Soldiers. And we're going to pray a very special prayer right now. You know, God, we hold hands here together as your children, thanking you for your manifested love in our lives. And we pray for the circumstance and the situation throughout Africa. Oh, my Lord, somehow, some way, intervene in those circumstances. And we pray for peace. And we pray for salvation. And we pray for the deliverance of so many children in that part of Africa that are being inducted into armies and forced into slavery. God, somehow, hear the cry of your people that go up from all over the world to ask you to intervene. We will give you the honor. We will give you the glory. We believe it. We believe it. We believe your concern. We believe your eye goes to and fro throughout the world. And you look upon the suffering of people. You'll have mercy. We thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's tell them that we appreciate them one more time being on the helpline.